when we think of the pharma companies, their business model and the regulatory processes are very different. And because of that, their ERP needs are going to be very different as well. So in this video, we are going to be talking about what pharma companies need in an ERP system. everyone my name is sam gupta and i am principal consultant at elevate iq elevate iq is the independent erp and digital transformation consulting firm we help our clients with erp selection erp contract negotiation erp implementation and erp project recoveries so let's get back to today's topic which is going to be the erp systems for pharma companies. So first, let's define the criteria as well as what is a pharma company from the ERP perspective. In the pharma company ecosystem, you are going to have companies such as the pharmaceuticals, the biotechnology companies. Uh, it's going to be any sort of nutraceuticals if they are going to be in the supplement nutrition space or the cannabis. So anything and everything that is going to be similar to the food manufacturing but it is going to be slightly more regulated food manufacturing, such as pharmaceutical. Uh, those are going to be qualified and under this umbrella. We, from the business model perspective, we are looking at players such as your distributors, repackagers, dispensers, and the manufacturers. All of those are going to be qualified for this list. And we are looking at all sizes, irrespective of whether you are a, a small one-man shop or you are a large Fortune 100 company, we are looking at all of those companies. So what else do we look for when we develop this criteria? We are looking at things such as market share, the ownership funding, who is funding it, and how financially stable the publisher is going to be. We are look, looking at the cloud nativeness of the solution, how strong is their community with pharma-centric subject matter experts and the consultants. We look at that, we look at the last mile functionality, how strong is the industry functionality and how much uh, investment and the time that you need to invest in developing those last mile features. We look at quality of documentation, how diverse the business model is going to be. So even though the list is going to be for pharma, inside pharma, how many different business models can you support uh, is going to be a criteria for us. Then we look at acquisition strategy. If these companies are acquiring a lot of uh, different companies to fill the holes in their pharma portfolio, then we consider that as well. And then finally, user reviews. If the user reviews are going to be from the pharma companies, that is going to be a factor for us. So now let's look at the list. So number 10 on our list is going to be the company called Blue Link ERP. And a lot of you may not have heard of Blue Link ERP. And some of the names that are going to be part of this list, you might not even recognize them. And the reason for that is because when we look at the pharma specific capabilities, there are going to be very nuanced capabilities. For example, if you look at DSCSA compliance, uh, or when you are looking at the TITH communication, or it is going to be uh, CSOS compliance or RCOS compliance, or it is going to be the drug suspension monitoring, all of those capabilities need to be there as part of the pharma ERP. If you are not going to have those, then you are going to be investing a lot in the configuration, in testing, in development. So that's why the pharma ERP systems are going to be very different. So Blue Link ERP is targeted for the smaller pharma distributors, and they are not going to be right fit for any of the large pharma companies. They are not going to be right fit for the pharma manufacturers. So pharma distributor and the pharma manufacturers are two different business models. The manufacturers require far deeper capabilities from the costing perspective, overall from the bomb formulation perspective. 
So Blue Link E or P is really a good fit for the small pharmacy and pharma distributors. So the strength for Blue Link E or P is going to be their deep last mile functionality. And the last mile functionality that you are going to get in case of Blue Link E or P, you don't have to invest money and time in developing those features, in testing those features. The other strength for Blue Link ERP is going to be their DSCSA compliance is very strong as well. And then you have the sub subject matter expertise with Blue Link ERP because their consultants are hanging out in these communities. The other vanilla ERP systems may not be hanging out in these ecosystems and they might not be as strong in their understanding of how these features work. And they are going to probably rely on your uh, expertise to develop these features. And again, you might not have as a strong understanding of the regulations either. So that's why the expertise of Blue Link ERP is going to be super beneficial just because they have that built as part of the system and that, that's been tested by a lot of different companies. Now, the other strength of Blue Link ERP is going to be, even though it's a very small ERP system, the technical architecture includes the SQL Server-based database, uh, which is very rare. Other uh, ERP systems in this category are probably going to be using the file-based data store. So that's a huge plus, uh, especially when you talk about the uh, regulated industries such as pharma. Now, the weakness for Blue Link ERP is going to be, it's not really designed for pharma manufacturers because it's not going to have those formulation capabilities, the complex R&D capabilities that your pharma manufacturers are going to require. The deep costing layers are probably not going to be present in case of Blue Link ERP. So it is probably going to be slightly more beneficial for the distributors that are going to be either buy-sell distributors or those are going to be assembly centric. Uh, those are the companies that are going to find huge value uh, overall with uh, Blue Link ERP. The other weaknesses for Blue Link ERP is going to be their ecosystem is not going to be as strong as some of the larger ERP systems, for example, SAP S4 HANA or Microsoft Dynamics 365. And the other factor that is going to count against them is going to be their financial standing. It's not backed by any strong PE firm or any corporate investors. So that's a huge minus for Blue Link ERP. And the other weakness is going to be that it is only suitable for smaller pharma companies. It's not really for large pharma companies. Uh, it is for companies that are going to be in the QuickBooks segment and they are looking for the operational and the regulatory functionality that they would not get in the plain vanilla accounting system. So for them, Blue Link ERP is going to be the right fit. The revenue range for these companies is going to be somewhere around 10 million dollars. For these reasons, Blue Link ERP ranks at number 10 on our list. Now, number nine on our list is going to be the ERP system called Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. And Business Central system is targeted for a small to mid-size FMCG distributor and pharma is going to be a key vertical for them. It is especially beneficial for pharma distributors. It's not as strong for the pharma manufacturers because of their limited uh, manufacturing capabilities. For manufacturers, they would probably require an add-on, but for distributors, it's going to be a very strong system. Now, the strength for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central uh, is going to be that it has a lot of different add-ons with deep pharma capabilities, similar to what you are going to get in case of your Blue Link ERP. So some of the ecosystems might not even have those add-ons, and some of these add-on companies are very uh, rapid. I mean, they are not going to be a reseller who may have less than five installations. These are product-centric companies that are trying to develop the add-on for Microsoft Dynamics Business Central. So that's going to be a huge plus for Business Central ecosystem that you have the add-ons available on top of one of the uh, top graded ERP system. Now, the other strength for Business Central is going to be the native support for the multiple serial and, and lot numbers. And in the case of Pharma, you are probably going to be requiring a serial number that is going to be part of your data set as the data set is moving through your supply chain. And then you are going to have the lot number as well. So you have multiple serial numbers and lot numbers that is going to be part of your data set that you need to have when you are going to be communicating with the regulatory agency or you require for your own internal 
uh, processing to make sure that you are compliant with DSCSA. And uh, other ERP systems in this category might not have native support for multiple serial numbers or the lot numbers uh, for the same item. And that's going to be a huge limitation for those systems and Business Central supports that natively. The other strength for Business Central is going to be their deep ERP supply chain and bin allocation uh, capabilities. Now the weaknesses for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is going to be that it is going to require an add-on and then you are looking at all of those risks of vendor conflicts, uh, vendor issues uh, with respect to your DSCSA and then you are not going to have any native support for formulation management. So for pharma manufacturer, it's probably going to be a weaker solution because you are going to struggle with quality, you are going to struggle with R&D, um, you are going to struggle with formulation management, and you might get better uh, you know, solution on, on this list if you are a manufacturer. But for pharma distributor, if you are okay in utilizing one of the add-ons, then BC could be a great solution for you. For these reasons, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central ranks at number nine on our list. <music> Now, number eight on our list is going to be system called Aptine Process Pro. And Aptine Process Pro is targeted at small to medium size process centric industries and pharma is going to be one of the verticals for them. Now, Aptine Process Pro is probably not going to be as suitable for the companies that are going to have diverse business model. For example, let's say if you do uh, a lot of discrete manufacturing in the life sciences vertical, it is probably going to be medical device uh, as well as pharma. Aptin Process Pro might struggle because the perspective is very narrow. It is really designed for those process or formulation centric industries. Uh, now, the strength for Aptin Process Pro is going to be their deep process manufacturing capabilities. So, this system is probably going to be far superior for companies that are in the process manufacturing uh, space. The other strength for uh, Aptine Process Pro is going to be the financial stability of the private equity company. Aptine is backed by one of the largest private equity company, so that's a huge plus for them. The final strength for Aptine is going to be their deeper ERP capabilities than some of the other uh, smaller ERP systems such as Blue Link. Uh, ERP, uh, in the case of Aptine Process Pro, you are going to have far deeper customer hierarchies, far deeper costing layers, and the, and the scheduling layer in terms of uh, reducing your data entry. When you are small, you probably don't need those. But once you grow past that $10 million point and you are, a pharma, uh, you are in the pharma manufacturing space, then you probably would need those capabilities. Now, the weakness for Aptine Process Pro is going to be their legacy interface. This product has not received the same attention as some of the other products in the Aptin portfolio, such as Aptin ROS. Uh, so the interface is still very legacy. The other minus for uh, Aptin Process Pro is going to be their smaller ecosystem. The ecosystem is not going to be as strong as some of the other competitors on this list, such as Microsoft, SAP, or Oracle. And the final weakness for the Aptin Process Pro is going to be the last mile functionality for DSCSA compliance is not going to be strong as some of the very focused pharma ERP systems. So you are still going to be spending a lot more in terms of the testing, validation, configuration, and the development uh, of those features. And for these reasons, Aptine Process Pro ranks at number eight on our list. <music> Number seven on our list is going to be the system called Oracle ERP Cloud. And Oracle ERP Cloud is among the large ERP systems and typically it is going to be suitable for those large pharma companies that are going to have the revenue more than a billion dollar and they are probably going to have 10 to 20 uh, different legal entities and that's when Oracle ERP Cloud is going to shine overall in the deep ERP capabilities and the globalization capabilities that you would probably require once you grow to that point. It is not going to be suitable for smaller pharma companies. It's going to be overkill. It might be overwhelming for a lot of different SMB pharma distributors uh, as well as for manufacturers. The strength of Oracle ERP Cloud is going to be their deep ERP capabilities for 
large pharma companies, when you are looking for the, if you are a public centric company and uh, you are looking for deep ERP capabilities uh, to enable your financial workflow, to enable your approval process, to enable your, uh, you know, commitment, income plans, processes, that's where the uh, Oracle ERP cloud is going to shine. The other strength for Oracle ERP cloud is going to be their talent ecosystem uh, and the product is well adopted. So you are not going to uh, have problems in finding the external consultants. If you ever need help, you are not only reliant uh, on the OEM support. So you have far deeper consulting base if you ever need that. So that's a huge plus for Oracle ERP cloud. And the uh, other plus for Oracle ERP cloud is going to be that ability to support diversified business models. And let's say if you are acquiring a lot of different companies, then you probably need to have those that flexibility as part of your ERP system. For example, let's say if you are in the pharma space, but you might acquire a device because using that device, the market penetration is going to be far easier for you, or you might have a diagnostic device that goes along with your pharma capabilities, then that's where the flexibility of ERP system is going to be really handy in supporting all of those businesses. Now, when we look at the weaknesses of Oracle ERP Cloud, number one is going to be the last mile functionality is going to require a lot more development, testing, configuration effort uh, as with any other large ERP system. And the DSC SA support is going to be poor as well. So you need to be developing on top of the ERP. Now, if you have the big, uh, large IT organization, then you are probably not going to have as much of a problem if you can invest million dollar uh, in developing these features. But for most SMBs, that's probably not a possibility. Now, the other weakness for Oracle ERP Cloud is going to be the over bloated financial control processes. And these processes are probably not going to be relevant for you if you are the, the SMB. So that's why it is not really a fit for the smaller to mid-size uh, pharma companies. But if you are a large com uh, pharma company, then this is going to be a great fit. That said, uh, Oracle ERP Cloud uh, ranks at number seven on our list. Number six on our list is going to be Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. And Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations is targeted for large companies similar to Oracle ERP Cloud. It is going to have similar strengths and weaknesses. There are some distinctions overall in the Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations in terms of the strength. One of the unique strengths that MS FNO has compared to your Oracle ERP Cloud is going to be the pre-integrated best of breed options, and that is going to be uh, your Microsoft CRM is slightly stronger uh, in the Microsoft portfolio. Uh, Oracle is not going to have as, as, as deep CRM in enabling those processes. For example, let's say if you require the controlled release of any substances during your coding process, now that could be slightly harder in uh, your Oracle ERP cloud, but Microsoft is going to be easier just because their uh, CRM is very cloud native. It's the number two CRM. So those processes are going to be far easier in Microsoft Dynamics 365. But the other strengths are very similar to Oracle ERP cloud, and that is going to be your deep ERP capabilities for your large companies. They're still designed for very large companies, similar to what Oracle ERP cloud targets. And uh, then the uh, if you have the diversified business models, uh, then the capabilities are going to be fairly similar to Oracle ERP cloud. Now, when we look at the weaknesses, then the weaknesses are going to be the last mile functionality similar to Oracle ERP Cloud, that DSCSA support is probably going to be limited, and then you are going to be spending a lot more money in enabling that support. Another weakness similar to Oracle ERP Cloud is going to be the over bloated financial control processes that is going to require a lot more effort in disabling them and uh, making sure that the system is not appearing as overwhelming for your users and the adoption is not going to be as poor. Uh, and then you have the uh, similar weakness as that this is probably not going to be a fit for the smaller to mid-sized pharma companies. It's really targeted for those large uh, pharma companies. For these reasons, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations ranks at number six on our list. <laughs> Now, number five on our list is going to be the system called SAP S4 HANA. 
And the reason why SAP S4 HANA is ahead of your Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations and Oracle ERP Cloud is going to be because of its uh, deeper best of breed capabilities that are going to be far more important for the large uh, pharma companies when we compare the needs of the large pharma companies. For large pharma companies, S4, SAP S4 HANA is going to be slightly superior system uh, compared to your Oracle ERP Cloud and Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. The other strengths that SAP S4 HANA is going to have compared to your Oracle ERP Cloud and Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations uh, is going to be the superior financial control and the governance processes, especially if you are going to be a public pharma company, then you probably would require the governance support as part of your ERP. And uh, the best of breed options is if you look at SAP S4 HANA, it has many different best of breed options that are going to be slightly superior. If you look at uh, uh, systems such as Calidus Cloud, or if you look at the ACM product, which is slightly stronger compared to your Microsoft or Oracle ERP Cloud, that is going to be your success factors. And the integration is going to be uh, slightly smooth overall in terms of, because that's going to be the product from SAP. The weaknesses for SAP S4 HANA is going to be similar to what we have for Oracle ERP Cloud, which is the last mile functionality for the SCSA compliance. And then uh, other weaknesses are uh, equally similar, such as over bloated uh, financial control processes, as well as it is probably not a system for the smaller to mid-size pharma companies. And for these reasons, uh, SAP S4 HANA ranks at number five on our list. <music>
companies, it's not going to be suitable for very small pharma companies or very large pharma companies that are going to be in the range of SAP S4 HANA Oracle that are going to be over two to three billion dollar range. The strength for QAD is going to be the ability to support diversified business model. It has deep discrete manufacturing capabilities, but it does have support for process manufacturing capabilities. So if you are going to be a company which is going to be very medical device centric, but you might have, let's say, 40, 30 percent pharma play, then this could be a great product for you. The other strength for QAD is going to be it has inbuilt process manufacturing capabilities. And then finally, the ERP capabilities are super strong as well from the supply chain perspective. If you're you are going to have a very deep integrated supply chain, especially internationally. In the case of pharma companies, you are probably going to have that. Uh, and if you are looking for deeper features of, such as ESG or global trade compliance features, uh, you need to make sure that you are not sending something that might be prohibited in a specific country. And probably pharma is going to be needing those capabilities. So that is going to be a huge uh, strength for QAD. Now, when we look at the weaknesses of QAD is going to be the technical architecture. QAD still uses a very legacy programming language, even though it has very modern uh, UX, the underneath underlying technical architecture is not as strong because number one of the programming language, number second reason is going to be it is not really deployed on one of the mainstream cloud providers. So that's a, a minus for them because they are not going to have the economy and they are not going to be as advanced or as progressive in developing the features that other modern cloud providers might provide overall when you look at the underneath AI capabilities, etc. So that's going to be a minus for QAD. The other minus for QAD is going to be it's primarily targeted for the discrete verticals. And so discrete features are going to be far stronger. The process features are not going to receive as much attention inside the QAD portfolio because their primary target is going to be discrete. So that's going to be a minus for them. And then talent ecosystem is fairly lean as well with respect to QAD. You are really relying on QADs support. You don't really have as many consultants with QAD. So that's going to be a minus for QAD. For these reasons, QAD ranks at number three on. Now, number two on our list is going to be a system called ECI GCOM. And ECI GCOM is a very small uh, pharma centric ERP system. It's targeted for smaller process centric companies. Uh, it's not really a fit for the larger pharma companies. ECI DCOM plays in that QuickBooks segment when you are going to be somewhere around 5 to 20, 30 million dollar range. That's where ECI DCOM is probably going to be a great fit. The strength for ECI DCOM is going to be their deep e commerce and DTC capabilities. So now, if you are very e commerce centric pharma distributor, then you require uh, your POS capabilities, you require your root accounting, root navigation, root uh, centric packaging, uh, along with all of those uh, pharma centric capabilities, then ECI DCOM is probably going to be a great fit for you. The other uh, uh, strength for ECI DCOM is going to be, even though the system is smaller, uh, they have a very deep last mile capabilities for pharma companies. And then finally, the strength for uh, ECI DCOM is going to be the financial backing of the private equity company. ECI is backed by very strong private equity company. So you don't have to worry about their financial standing. And then the, the technology and the architecture is very strong as well. Even though it's a very small system, it is backed by your SQL Server database. Uh, and it's, uh, it's one of the modern, it has one of the most modern interface uh, among all ERP systems in terms of its cloud maintenance. So that's going to be a huge plus for ECI DCOM. The weaknesses for ECI DCOM is going to be, it's only suitable for smaller uh, pharma companies. It's not really designed for larger pharma companies. And then the support for diversified business model, since it is really targeted for those process centric industries, if you are going to have diversified business model, then you are probably not going to be happy with it. And then the other minus for ECI DCOM is going to be the weaker uh, uh, supply chain and the finance capabilities, it's not going to have as deeper uh, costing layers or the deeper ERP capabilities that the larger ma uh, manufacturing and the distribution companies are going to require. For these reasons, ECI DCOM ranks at number two on our list. <laughs> Now, number 
number one on our list is going to be a system called Sage X3. And Sage X3 is targeted at the upper mid-market companies, uh, and those are going to be anywhere from 250 to a billion dollar. And sometimes it could be a great replacement for companies that might be in that $1 billion to $5 billion range, and they are looking for replacement for SAP S4 HANA, Oracle ERP Cloud, or Microsoft 365 FNO, uh, because with Sage X3, you are going to get far deeper process manufacturing capabilities, the capabilities that are designed from the perspective of food and beverage manufacturers and, and distributors. So it's not going to be suitable for smaller pharma distributor or manufacturer. They might find it overwhelming or very large uh, companies that are going to prefer the financial capabilities over operational capabilities, then Sage X3 is probably not going to be. The strength for Sage X3 product is going to be that it's a great alternative for uh, companies that are seeking replacement for SAP S4 HANA, large uh, ERP systems. And the other strength for uh, Sage X3 is going to be that it is really designed for those process and food manufacturing uh, companies. So if you are in that space, then you are going to like this system a lot more uh, when you are going to see features such as uh, your uh, product family, product groups, uh, and planning based on that. Um, those are going to be natively developed as part of Sage X3 system. You are probably not going to find those um, uh, capabilities in the other ERP systems that are going to be designed for the discrete verticals. The other strength for uh, Sage X3 is going to be the great ecosystem of the consultants for pharma validation just because it plays in the pharma validation vertical and that's why you have a lot more consultants that are present in that vertical you might not find as much support let's say if you compare this with qad for pharma then you are you might not now the weaknesses for sage x3 product is going to be that dscsa compliance is probably going to require additional efforts uh, in developing that and sage x3 is not going to be uh, suitable for the smaller pharma companies uh, and you are not going to have as many best of breed options when you are going to be a large company you probably require best of breed options uh, in the case of sap s4 hana oracle erp cloud uh, you are going to get far more best of breed options in the case of sage x3 you are probably going to be relying on the third party products if you want to integrate uh, hcm that is going to be enterprise grade or cpq that is going to be enterprise grade so you are looking at third party products but having said that sage x3 is a very strong product for the upper mid pharma companies and for these reasons it ranks at number one on our list if you enjoyed this video we are going to include a deeper analysis in a blog that is going to be linked as part of this video so don't forget to check that out and uh, don't forget to subscribe on uh, different platforms this is also available in the audio format uh, on many different channels such as apple spotify and google also don't forget to subscribe on uh, youtube if you are interested in getting updated whenever we release any new videos and we rely on you for your commentary analysis your feedback uh, to compile this list so make sure you guys are going to be posting your question your list in terms of what you have seen uh, in the pharma verticals if you have seen any problems with these products in these verticals post your comments below and, and any questions on that note thanks for tuning in i'll see you in the next one